Vegas Golden Knights, Arch Nemesis, uh, and uh, yeah, the team that where well, looks at Lana for yeah, there's no way we're gonna do well against them. But I didn't think it would be that bad. But before we get to that, we've got to talk about what has been yet another disappointing season and couple of season for the bandwagon. Uh, because it's fair to say this season, aside from Toronto, no other team had higher expectations than Vegas. Okay. With a perfect attendance so far in the place, playoffs, a very capable roster, the pressure, can, and also what we'd obviously the Kraken coming into the rear view mirror and potentially could maybe go one step further than Vegas in their day year. Fresh but definitely, as I felt, was on for Vegas this season. And just like every season, you choked! Oh yeah. Now, they did edge the Minnesota Wild in the first in the division semi-final. They then made the Dominant Colo Avalanche look silly in the division final. When it comes to facing a team that many felt should not have been there in the first place, the Golden Knights were humble. For the Montreal Canadiens. So, is Vegas going to do what they did when they lost to us in 2019 and overreact and not let us forget the, th the following year? Well, time will tell. But they may be the entertainment capital of the hockey world very, very soon. So, look at the numbers 40 14 2 was their record, but the tiebreaker favoured Colorado. So, that's why they are President's Trophy winners and not you. Deal with it. In the word, because they just kept mentioning the person about how we got more regular wins. But seriously, the tiebreaker failures in Colorado. So, bandwagon, in the great words of Hannah Montana, build a bridge and get over it. Alright, same for same you 2019. Just build the bridge and get Get over it, alright? No one cares. And technically, the power play, despite how much you like to brag about it and go on it, you only came 22nd this season, 70.8% while you, you were the number one pair skiing team in the league, 86.8%. Goals for 191, goals against 124. Right, the best player. Well, this should be a tie between Mark Stowe and Mark Andre Florin. Mark Stowe got named Vegas' first ever captain this before the season began. He led the team in points with 61. However, a postseason collapse! I'll just say that again. A postseason collapse! Against Montreal. I'll say that again. Against Montreal! Tainted Stones, yeah. He was great offensively and defensively all year round. The last get gained him 11 first place stealth votes and he finished further all after Flurry was terrible in 2019-20. He rebounded in 2021. Uh, with his first base of trophies was the Jennings. He had a 0.928 state percentage or 1.9 GAA playing an instrumental part in Vegas being first in goals against the in the regular season. Biggest disappointment were after Golden Knights were, went all in by training away Nate Schmidt to sign Petrangelo to a seven year deal. So, oh, I'll cover him about, about to pack on the head of it. Louis going to be t t turning his st stomach here. But well done. That's, that, was a good, that was a good little trade there, netting Petrangelo and inking him. Because most teams, when they nab a big fish, they don't tend to sort of ink them straight away. They like to nab the big fish, make a big deal about the fact, oh, we've nabbed the big, nabbed the big fish, let him play his first year with us, and then we'll ink him. Well, Vegas sort of went the bold route. They're like, well, if we're going to go for it, let's go for it and lock him in so that no other team can try and poach in the following year. So, Again, I praise the, the trade deal of nabbing Petrangelo off the Blues. 
and leave into a giant shaped hole. And I also have to praise you for doing the bold move of inking him to a seven year deal. And he was expected to perform. Instead, he had just 23 points. While he was held to just 41 games and had 12 points in the playoffs, Trangelo wasn't spectacular. For just the third time since 2011 12, he received zero noise votes. A team that did not have many disappointments. That is enough for Trangelo to take that title. But he's been kind of away, quite a lot of net back big fish his last couple of years. Toronto with Tiberius, also with Carlson. Mm. And then, right, behind the bench, the Golden Knights' knee jerk decision to, to fire Gerald Gallant and replace him with Pete DeBoer has not done much for them. However, it has not harmed them either. The team was for fourth under DeBoer this year, facing top three in goals against and goals for. They just missed out on that present trophy as well, but beat the team that did win it in the second round, Vision Files, I would call it. DeBoer made some questionable goal-tending decisions in the playoffs, but he was not the pro- problem. For analysis, so Vegas heads of McPhee and Crimin made many amazing moves in the franchise in the first few seasons. Their shoe percentage came down to earth this year, though. The retirement decision and the salary cap hurdles that came along with it were rough, but not awful. However, it forced the Golden Knights to play multiple games with less than 18 skaters. The worst move this year was trading for Matthias Janmark. The ball did not do enough to warrant his trade price of the second and third round pick. Now he's in UFA and up like to return. How they react to another tough playoff ending will be key in determining their success. So far, they are still a far away from the hot seat. But what they're not far from the hot seat, of course, is how they do against us. Now, obviously, going into the season, I looked at them on that division and played them for, right, that's the team we're not going to do well against, okay? And if you look at the division line at the top of this season that's been gone, you could find one, each team could find at least one team in the division that they know, yeah. Just scratch that one off. We're not going to do well against them. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know, it's got to be one. It's going you know, to be tough against more than one. Right. Yeah. But I did not think we wouldn't come away with at least a single win over them. That I did not see coming. Um, they just outscored power players, really. That's all you can really say. Um, the Sharks did have a few leads at various points and did take them to overtime a few times, but. Or in all the Golden Knights were able to still find a way to come back and just be the dominant force, you know. Just, just... It's hard for me to try and make work out what it is, because... Our two teams should not be the fierce rivals we are. And yet we are. That's because you've got... But that's only because you've got a temper tantrum! Seriously, let 2019 go. Move on. I know we have, right? But, uh, yeah... Sharks definitely this season just did not find a way to beat the Golden Knights.